Hey y'all, it's Bear, and as you can see by the title of today's video, I'm here to do the Hocus Pocus book tag, which was created last year by my friend Bree over at the channel Locked Booktician. I will leave that original video and Bree channel link downstairs for you to go check out. And these are just questions that kind of revolve around like themes and tropes and stuff in the movie Hocus Pocus. Uh, so we're just gonna answer the question. That's how tag videos work. <laughs> question number one, what book would you consider a sweet treat? Or what's a book that you can't get enough of? The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt by Real Mason illustrated it by Byron Eggenschweiler. This is the sweetest freaking picture book ever. It's about a little ghost who is a quilt, as the title indicates, but all of his friends and families are sheets, and he's jealous of them because that they can fly and whoosh around in the scare, kind of effortlessly, but because he's a quilt and he's heavy, he can't do that and he doesn't like the way he looks. And one Halloween night, a family takes him home, and that's bad because ghosts are terrified of families. That's why they woo because they're scared. <laughs> this is a book that my fiance got me for my birthday and I've read it like four times and y'all this is oh my god oh my god. I would say if you were one of the people who hopped on the Gustavo the Shy Ghost train last year definitely check out The Little Ghost Who Was a Quilt. These are just perfect for that picture book reader in your life. Oh my god. Next, what's a series that has magic, vampires, and werewolves? This was hard, and I could honestly only think of one series, and that's the Night World series by L.J. Smith. This is a bind-up of the first three novels. I read the first nine novels in the series. The tenth one has not been published. She's been writing it for since the 90s jesus if you start the series based on my recommendation be aware that like it's not finished and probably won't get finished anytime soon but if you want something that's just brain candy i would recommend this series there's like a secret community of witches and werewolves and vampires and shapeshifters and the rules of the night world are you can't fall in love with a human and you can't tell a human about the night world but throughout the series we learn about this thing called the soulmate principle and a prophecy that says a group of humans and a group of night worlders are all going to fall in love they're going to realize they're soulmates and something is gonna happen and because book 10 was never published we don't know what happened but y'all i have this series right here i know exactly where it is on my bookshelf it is nine books do you see this nine books i read nine books waiting for book 10 because apparently every character in the series except for like three of them are gonna die and at this point i just i, I want to write my own fan fiction and finish it off name a book or series with two sisters who are also magical i'm cheating on this one just a teeny tiny bit and i'm gonna go with three dark crowns by kendar blake so there are actually three sisters in this book indicated by three dark crowns. Brie mentioned The Song Below Water and Practical Magic, and those were the only two that I could find on my shelf that would fit. So I am choosing three dark crowns instead just to give you another recommendation with Magical Sisters. This one is a high fantasy novel. It's not witchy, it's high fantasy, but each of the three sisters has a different kind of power. So they are magic users, but they're not like hocus pocus witches. And this one's also like them fighting to the death for the crown. Like there can only be one queen and they have to murder the other two. So I need to continue with the series and see who wins because if Queen Katarine does not win, and if you spoil this for me, I understand that the series has been out for a while, but if you spoil Three Dark Crowns for me, I I will be so devastated. Please don't spoil the series for me. I have done so good at avoiding spoilers. <laughs> Next question, who's your favorite character to dress up as? I don't do a whole lot of cosplay. Uh, I'm not experienced, nor do I have the skill set to be able to pull all of that off in even a slightly successful manner. Um, but last year for my work, we did like a week of costume days and I dressed up as Ash Ketchum from Pokemon. So I would say just like a Pokemon trainer. I feel like that's a pretty simple costume to pull together. You can do that with like whatever's laying around and like I just I want to be a Pokemon trainer. Next, have you seen Hocus Pocus and what do you think of it? I saw Hocus Pocus as a child like most people and I loved it and I think it's great. It's been a while since I've rewatched it. I don't think I've rewatched it in like four or five years so my brain's a little fuzzy on it. I feel like you just put you put Bette Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker and Kathy and Jimmy in there and how is that a recipe for disaster and also a recipe for like a masterpiece at the exact same time? I don't understand it, but it, it works in like the best campy train wreck way. 
Next, if you could have any famous cat, who would you pick? I've seen a lot of people say Salem. I've seen a lot of people say Binks from Hocus Pocus. But I am going to go with the cat from Coraline. I haven't seen anyone say this yet. And I A, want to be quirky and different. And B, I think that this, out of all of the cats mentioned so far, that I've seen in this tag is the most useful. This cat is smart and knows things. This cat knows how to beat the other mother. The cat is like aware of magic and is like your one support character in this book. And then in the film, the cat like actively is like against the other mother, against the Belle Dame. So I think that the cat might not necessarily like be on my side, but I would want to be like allies. Like, look, that's me and my new cat friend sitting together. Next, what's your favorite fictional warlock of all time? This was another hard one. Bree, these questions were tricky for me. I have not read a whole lot of books with warlocks. I've read a lot of witchy books. I've read a lot of, like, magic using books. But warlocks were hard. I have two answers for this. This was hard, so I'm just gonna do both of my possible answers. And first I'm gonna say, all of the warlocks in the Secrets of the Immortal Alchemist Nicholas Flamel series, these magic users in this book, all of the magic is done so different, but it's all based through aura. So you have characters who aren't necessarily warlocks, but like they know how to do magic. And then you have characters who are warlocks. You have this series pulling from all different cultures and mythologies and stuff. And it just weaves together in a really wonderful way that at least I enjoyed whenever I was like 12 reading this book. I mean, right here is the book in the series called The Warlock. And this is a six book series. I would say all of the magic users, uh, but especially John D in these books, I found him to be a very compelling villain. And then my other answer is once again, not a warlock, but a medicine man who uses magic in a way further than medicine. And that's going to be Kai from the Trail of Lightning series. Like I said, I don't know that I would totally count him as a warlock. If you're not aware of how the Six World series works, basically all the Navajo people have different powers. And Kai's is kind of like supernaturally ghosty vibes, as well as him being a medicine man. So I would say that that counts him as a magic user. Please understand, if you're not indigenous watching this, that... Warlock and Medicine Man are two separate things. I wanted to talk about him because he was one of the few good male magic users that I could find on my shelf. And then a last question, what author would you want to go trick-or-treating with? I have a lot that I think it would be a lot of fun to hang out with, get candy, go cause some mischief, but like there's one. Ryan Lasala, please make me a sexy anglerfish costume. Just go look at anything Ryan has posted on the internet from past costume parties or Halloween parties, but like especially the sexy anglerfish really takes the cake. Like, please familiarize yourself with Ryan Lasala's costuming DIY abilities. I just think it would be really cool to like go trick-or-treating with Ryan and have like a Ryan Lasala custom anglerfish costume. I'm sorry, is this weird? Let's make some Halloween costumes together. But that's all I have for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by subscribing, hitting the bell, leaving a thumbs up, and answering the comment question of the day. I'm doing a lot of hand talking right now. Comment question of the day. If you've watched Hocus Pocus, let me know which Sanderson sister you think you're the most like. Personally, I consider myself a Mary. I'm just saying like me riding a vacuum cleaner in Salem on Halloween is what 2021 needs to really save it. Kathy and Jimmy, please watch your back. I am coming for your job. And if you don't have time, you don't have the spoons, you don't have an answer, or you don't want to an answer, let me know you made it all the way until the end of the video by leaving me what? A yellow heart. That's exactly right. You did such a good job today. All my social media links will be linked downstairs in the link tree, as well as places you can support me further around the internet. And don't forget to check out Bree's channel and original tag video. She created the Black Awena Thon, which is going on this month to celebrate Black horror, thriller, and mystery, so make sure you're participating in that and just having a good time with that. Alright, I hope you have a wonderful whatever it is, wherever you are. I'll see you next time with another video. Thank you for watching. Okay, cool. Bye. I'm out of storage space.